Thank you everyone for joining us. We have Dave Roberts, Moody Bets, Kevin Jansen, and Clayton Kershaw now available. I'm going to turn it over to Dave for an opening statement. Um, first off, thanks for uh, for listening, tuning in. Uh, this is a unique situation for all of us. And uh, with what's going on in our country, the recent happenings in Wisconsin, um, players, coaches came together, Dodgers, Giants, and feeling that to play tonight, to not play tonight, um, allowing us to use our platform, to use our voices, and to let the world know, the country know, how sad, how frustrating, angered we all are. Um, that looking at the world, the way the country is right now, people are being treated this way, people of color, and these conversations need to be had. And uh, we open it up to questions for all of us, but we all feel aligned, Clayton, myself, Kenley, and everyone in that clubhouse. First question is for the water. Guys, thanks for taking the time to, to be with us in this um, moment. Um, what were some of the conversations and decisions that went behind um, the result of, of not playing tonight? I know there were some lengthy conversations and discussions that you guys needed to have as a group to come to this conclusion. Yeah, uh, for me, I think no matter what, uh, I wasn't going to play tonight uh, just because I have to uh, just stand by my guns here. Um, like, like Doc said, there's a lot going on in the world and change needs to be made. Um, you know, I have to use my platform to, uh, to at least get, it, get the ball rolling. Um, and you know, I talked to my teammates and told them how I felt. And they all uh, were by my side. And I can't ask for better, better teammates than, than what I have here. And I just appreciate everything that was, everything that was said and everything that's been, uh, been done so far. Clayton, for you personally, um, I know that this is something that you have been very vocal about uh, supporting your teammates, uplifting your teammates, talking about these conversations that are difficult to have sometimes. Um, what went behind your thought process today and in, in, in being here right now? Well, I think, uh, you know, more than anything, you know, as, as a teammate of Mookie's, as a you know, member of this team with Doc and George and Trav and Ken and all these guys, um, as a white player on this team is how can we show support? What's something tangible that we can do to help our black brothers on this team? And, um, you know, once Mookie said that he wasn't going to play, um, that really started our conversation as a team as what we can do to support that. Um, we felt the best thing to do was to support that and not playing with him. And Mookie was great about saying, if you guys want to play, I support that. And, um, but we made a collective group decision to not play tonight and um, to, to let our voices be heard for, for standing up for what we believe is right. And that's what it comes down to. We just, we just wanted to do the right thing um, as a team. And I think the first step in that was by not playing tonight. You mentioned doing the right thing and standing up for one another. Kenley, what are you hoping that this, this moment of solidarity with all of your teammates, what do you hope that this accomplishes and what statement as a, as a collective are you guys trying to put out there about, about you guys and about the Dodgers? Well, the hope that we have is just, you know, the world will come together as one, as one piece and love, love your neighbor, love everybody. Um, all these, you know, things that's happening as good as people as color, you know, these stuff will just at least stop, you know, stop and, you know, what we like about, you know, Speaking for all of guys and, um, as a group, you know, in, in, in the locker room, you know, we all get it. We all get it. You know, like, you know, it's gonna be. It, it needs to be a change, and from seeing like, you know, all the other guys, you know, getting the message and you know, support, you know, the black community to just, you know, listen to stuff like, you know, we want to be loved in, the, um, in this country too, and. You know, this is a beautiful country, man. I'm not even I'm speaking from being, you know, a guy from Kyrgyzstan so, and always watching in America. This is a beautiful country, man. And I feel like, you know, it's just it's just time now to, to have a change, you know, because, you know, all eyes in this world is on, on America, you know. And, I mean, you know, we just want to see that change, you know. 
just make that statement here. And so the peace and love can come and hopefully the whole world can come together as one. Well. If you're in a unique position as a as an African American man, as a first African American manager in this organization, but also as a leader of men of, of all different races and, and, and creeds and colors and everything, how does a manager navigate in this situation and how did you lead your team to, to be standing there with three of your superstars right now? I think it's just letting them drive it. I think it's it's certainly about me, it's personal to me um, when I knew. My cousin got shot and killed. Um, you know, my father, who was one of the you know, first black men in his high school and got many fights and you know, threats. Um, but I think as far as the meeting, it was just more of getting everyone together and sharing our thoughts. And like Mookie said, or Clayton said, uh, everyone you know, was given the right to whatever thought, idea they had. Um, but collectively, ultimately, we came to the uh, consensus that we shouldn't play today. And um, so I think that to your earlier question, it's more of us kind of coming together as a group, the entire Dodger fan base, which has such great bandwidth to have these conversations that we're baseball players. We love to play baseball. These guys are great at playing baseball, but it's, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the game's bigger than all of us, but, and no bigger issue than right now what's going on. Um, it's not a political issue. Um, I understand the election is coming up, but, this is a human being issue and we all need to be treated the same way and, and a black man being shot seven times in the back, it just, we need to be better. It just, that just can't happen. I appreciate you for taking the time. Thank you. Next question is for David Asai. Go ahead. For you guys now, where do you go from here? Do you plan on not playing tomorrow and how much impact do you think athletes have had today? Uh, I'll go. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think as far as today goes, we've, we've made a great statement as a team. Um, I feel like we did the right thing for today. And as far as tomorrow goes, I think that's another conversation. We'll figure it out. But um, I believe, you know, if Mookie plans on playing, I think we're going to play. And if it's a double header, we'll figure that out as well. But uh, for right now, um, I think the, the plan as a team is to play one game tomorrow. How much of an impact do you feel athletes have had today to raise awareness to try to create some sort of tangible change? I think uh, I think we've done a great job. Um, obviously, if there's we've taken our stands and and done um, you know some things as far as just bringing awareness. But I think there's got to be uh, more action as far as getting involved. Um, I think uh, there's there's got to be some ways. I'm not exactly sure how. Um, with everybody in their sports that they uh, have to take care of. But I think there's got to be some way to, to put in programs or, or just to teach teach the kids uh, now how, how to handle situations uh, when they arise. Um, because that's where the change is going to be made is with the kids, not with the, the people that are grown already. Thank you. Next question for Mario Castillo. But Hey, Buki, you mentioned uh, you plan on not playing tonight regardless. I'm just wondering what your day was like. Um, I'm sure you saw what the, the Bucks did. And did you have conversations with players around the league, friends of yours, family? How, how did that decision come to be? Uh, some family. I uh, talked with some family. And uh, once I got here, um, you know, I think uh, I was going about my day. And then as I just kept, you know, uh, sending texts back and forth to the family, I just kind of uh, realized that it's, it's probably best that I take that. I, I don't play. Um, you know, like I said, I talked to these guys. And, you know, I was fully on board. If, if they play, you know, I'm going to be their brother and be the first one on the steps cheering them on. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, in, my, in my shoes, I, I couldn't play. Thank you. Next question is from JP Martin. Hey, guys, I'm just curious how much conversation there was with the Giants and if you were able to feel out their sentiment. Um, as well um, as making your own decision not to play. Yeah, this was a collective, collective thing. You know, we uh, we felt like um, you know once again, once we talked within our team and things like that, and talked with Mookie and Trav and George and Doc about what they thought about the situation, and um, you know the rest of us just tried to decide how to best support that. Was really what it came down to. And the Giants were the same way, trying to figure out the best way to support their teammates. 
and came to it as a collective effort. We had a few different discussions with uh, other players on the Giants, and uh, it was a, definitely a collective effort tonight. And I think the thing is, is that Clayton said it best. Um, for for black athletes right now to make a stand and choose not to play tonight um, is one thing. Um, but black people have been fighting this fight for, for centuries. And for the white brothers to come in and support the black men in this game um, is much more powerful. And we did talk to the Giants as well, and they were in lockstep with our thoughts. And you know, Mookie, myself, George, Kenley had their own thoughts of what they were going to do. Um, but for our brothers, our teammates to support us as well, that just took, took this over the top. And that's where we're, we're trying to get to and uh, get everyone together. Well, we found out that this game was going to be postponed a little less than an hour before first pitch um, scheduled for right about now. I'm just wondering how quickly you guys kind of came to that decision on your own. Um, there's a lot of, it wasn't, it wasn't easy and nor should it be. There was a lot of conversations. There was a lot of one-off conversations, uh, a lot of emotional conversations between all of us um, and trying to figure out what best way we could use this platform that we're all so fortunate to have. Uh, um, so there's a lot of some logistics, but the bottom line is that ultimately we all came together and felt that we were not gonna play tonight. Um, so that, that took some time. And I think that you had to hear everybody and it was a really, really, some really good conversations. Next question is for Terry Osborne, go ahead Terry. Um, Dave, just it's more logistical. Um, is your expectation that you have to make this game up? Do you know tomorrow? Will it be? I know you guys haven't decided on whether you play tomorrow, but um, logistically, um, do you know what what's what's next when it comes to this game today? No, we we don't we don't. And I think that the thing is, is that the number one priority was we all collectively came together and felt today we weren't gonna play and we needed to make a statement. Um, and we'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow. And Mookie, just back to you. Um, we're talking a lot about how, you know, Dave mentioned, you know, the, the white players coming in and, and supporting, you know, what your decision. Um, what does that mean to you? Uh, everything is because it's gonna take all of us to make change. Like Doc said, black people have been fighting this fight for centuries. And so, um, you know, we haven't gotten anywhere. And so I think uh, just having the white, the white players, people in general to help push it, um, I think change can be made, but it's gonna take all of us, um, you know, not just one, one group of people. Thank you. Another question from Luana, go ahead, Luana. Dave, I'm just wondering if, as a collective, your group of men, your group of players decided to play, it puts you in an interesting position. Would you have elected to to sit out or and have Bob manage, or would you have managed this game anyway? I was going to sit out. I was going to sit out this game, and um, I, I know that uh, Mark Walter and uh, ownership and front office we're 100% supportive of my decision, um, George's decision, George Lombard's decision potentially, and, and Travis Smith, our uh, strength and conditioning coach as well. So uh, I had the support, we get the support of you know, the entire organization and the players, which uh, it is, I'm just very grateful for. Appreciate your honesty. Thank you for your time. A question from Bill Flashley. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, other, um, other players and other teams have chosen to set out today, and yet their teams have not backed them. Their teams are on the field. What does this say about the power and the, the, the unity of the Dodger clubhouse? 
Yeah, Bill, um, that's a hard one to speak to as far as, because I think that where things came out, the East Coast games and, and um, other players, yeah, they're choosing to sit out, but they're playing. Uh, I don't think we can speak to that, Bill, but I do know from ownership on down, they're supportive of whatever decision we made collectively. And uh, to be a part of this organization to support that, we all understand that it's bigger than baseball. And uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a human um, issue and, and systemic problem that we all understand should be at the forefront of our thoughts. I have time for one more. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, everybody realizes what uh, April 15th, 1947 means, particularly with the Dodger organization. Have you had a chance to reflect what this day will mean? You think this will be historic, that people remember this day for a long, long time? I mean, you know, I think uh, hopefully this day is remembered because it's the first step to change. Um, you know, so I, I know I'll always remember it. Um, you know, I think, uh, like I said, hopefully it's, it's the first step to change. And, I think uh, as I know for me, I feel a lot, I was, I was already tight with everybody in the clubhouse, but now that I know everybody has my back even more than um, they are, than I already thought uh, means a lot. And so like I always remember this day and I always remember this team uh, just having my back and you know, this, this organization has been nothing but amazing. And at the end of the day, for, for me, it's just how you love people well. And I think that's what I keep coming back to is, um, you know, what some of our black teammates, some of the black players around the league, some of the things that they've been through, I'll never understand. And it's just trying to figure out how to support them the best way possible. And I don't have the right answer, but for tonight, I feel like the right answer for us, for myself as a white man, um, was to sit out with them. And I think that's ultimately what we're going to have to do is just continue to listen to them and then try to figure out the best way to love people well with that. And does this day happen with baseball wise without the Brewers? Or you think teams might have still decided to do this if the Brewers hadn't gone first? That's, that's each individual situation. Obviously, make, um, the NBA started it, and then the Brewers, it was obviously close to home for them, and then the Reds. Uh, but this is a decision that our clubhouse, we talked about internally and obviously brought it to the Giants. And they talked about it internally, a decision we made um, collectively um, as the Dodgers. So, um, but we certainly applaud what they did and respect it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.